be a better person so that we can have a better world. I think that's the biggest thing. Like I tell myself all that all the time. If I can be an example, maybe that'll make somebody else be an example. All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. This is the What You Don't Hear podcast. I am your host. My name is Ross Tyson. I'm a creative director, a filmmaker, a graphic designer, a positive thinker, but most importantly for this instance, I'm a podcaster as I bring you this show every other Monday and share these rad conversations I get to have with people. So if you're new around here, what this show is, is a deep dive into the minds and lives of my guests as I sit down and get to know them unfiltered and unedited as they share their life story with me. And if you are an avid listener, you'll know a recurring subject that often comes up in this show is the chat about the power of positive or neutral thinking, whichever way you want to explain it. And if you're a fan of learning about that, hearing how people push through their trials and tribulations and and keeping themselves motivated to just keep pushing, then I think you'll be a fan of this week's conversation. So this week features a talk that I had with Leek, also known as DJ Leek, as we met up for the very first time to have another, well, first time meeting here on the show, and we cover a lot of positivity talk in this one. So anyone familiar with Leek on social media knows that he loves to share these like energizing and uplifting pieces of content really all the time. And we dive into all of that right here for a fun, chill, and honestly motivating conversation. So really quick, before we dive in officially, let me remind you to subscribe to the show if you haven't yet. Head over to iTunes or Apple Podcasts and drop kick that subscribe button. Do the same on Spotify as well as my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Ross Tyson, where you can watch every new episode in video form anytime a new one drops. And of course, the next step after that, if you like what you hear on the show, please just share it around. Share it around, honestly. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as screenshotting your phone when you're listening to the episode. Toss that on your Instagram story. Tag me, tag the guest, or tag the show at WYDHpod so I know you dig what I'm up to here. Or if you don't feel like doing any of that, all I ask is to tell your friends about the show whenever they ask for a new podcast recommendation. It seriously adds up all just just more than you may know and it's the only way that we can keep this show growing is by sharing it and telling people to check it out so plugs and promotions are done up front you know what this episode is about so without any further ado let's just get to it episode 32 of what you don't hear and my conversation with Lee. Leek, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And Appreciate actually, it. That, that's a question for you. Uh, what what do I what do I call you? Do I call you <laughs> Leek? Do I call you DJ Leek? Do I? Do, is so there... I'm I'm doing like the whole P Diddy thing where okay. I'm just like you know shortening it. You know how he was P Diddy. I'm just I'm just Leek. Leek, Leek. cool. Yeah. Cool. So I gave the right intro. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, um, I've already said it a hundred times, but I appreciate you being down to do this. Um, we are meeting for the first time. This is yep. our first ever like actual conversation. Here we are. First date. Yes, first day on camera, got lights, got it recorded in audio. It's going to be something cool. Um, but yeah, dude, I, I'm, I'm stoked that you were down to do this. Um, I mean, we have literally talked for maybe maybe 10 minutes. You, yeah. you got here just a little bit ago. So we're just going to dive straight in. And one of the biggest things, honestly, that I wanted to start with was like in general for these episodes, a mm-hmm. lot of the times I don't really do a deep dive into the guest if I don't know them. Okay. I really don't dive in and do a lot of investigation. I know like kind of the general things right. about them, <laughs> but I save it for the pod of like, all right, cool. What can I really get to know? I just want it to naturally come up in conversation. Yeah. But the biggest thing that I saw on your social media that I would love to just talk about right at the start mm-hmm. is you just seem like this beacon maybe is the, is the word of like positivity <laughs> and positive energy. And I, and I noticed that's a big thing mm-hmm that you post about on at least like right. your Instagram and stuff like For that. Sure. So wh- where does that come from? What's, what's even maybe the goal with that? Like, let's Man. dive in. Um, it's funny. I knew you were going to go there, <laughs> but um, it's just, I don't know, man. It's so funny. Cause like, even when I think about it myself, I'm like, why do I, cause like, I'll hear that. And I'm like, you know, to me, I'm just trying to be like 
just trying to live a good life and you know just mm -hmm. do the, like give off the same energy for others and so like but to hear you know compliments like that like which thank you by the way that's very course, very yeah. nice um i think it just comes from being in a place where i wasn't always that and then getting to that place and being like wow i want to give this feeling to other people because i know what it's like to be at point a and I now know what it's like to be at point B. And it's like, point B is a lot better than point A. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, and, you know, it just really comes from that. And then, uh, like, when I was younger, my mom was kind of the same way. She instilled a lot of the characteristics and properties, you know, in me that I kind of show today. But, you know, she was always caring for other people. Always. She actually runs a nonprofit for um, underprivileged children. That's awesome. She's okay. been doing it for, like, 20 years. And so I, like, kind of had to share my mom, <laughs> you know, with all these other kids, like, every summer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, just just wanting people to enjoy the life they have while they're here because that's just kind of like where my mind's gotten. And I know it's not always so easy to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if I can give you something I've learned or that was taught to me or that I stumbled upon, like, yeah, like I want to share it, you know? So that's that's kind of like the foundation of it. Yeah. Of it, so. And dude, I, I love it because I it's, it's a cliche conversation mm -hmm. at this point, but I... I just feel like there's not enough of that sort of stuff no, on the internet. Not at all. <laughs> or, or I feel like it's one of two things. You either there's either not enough of just like the authentic, like, hey, I'm just sharing this stuff because I want to share it and I right. want to spread the energy, whatever it is. Or I know exactly where you're going. it goes over the top yeah. into like the influencer realm where it's yeah. it's sort of fabricated. And that's what I'm nervous about because I'm kind of getting to like. So, so I have actually two different Instagrams, and I did this on purpose. So I have one for, like, my DJing, whatever stuff that I'm doing. Um, and then I have my mental health group, Just Breathe. Because I didn't want the two to be intertwined, and I didn't want people to think that I was trying to boost one brand by using a positive, you know, f you know uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So I was like, these need to stay separated. Which is totally fine because, and it, it sucks because, like, I know if, like, I use my DJ page, it would, like, uh, reach so many more people, but I, I don't want that to be, like, I don't want them to mix. And so that's so funny you said that because, like, that's always one thing I've been worried about. I was like, I don't want people to think that, like, because I know I've seen it. Like, I've seen people that are, like, using positivity to just, like, get famous or, like, get a bunch of followers. And it's like... I don't know. Like, I I can't I can't do that. You know. So what's I, I love that we're talking about this because that is you know, like one of the things I was going to ask you was like how do you keep up yeah. on feeling and uh, like well enough to be like I need to I've, I feel like making this post today. I want to put this out there because I know that both from like the energy side and the authenticity side. I feel like I battle with that a lot yeah. when it comes to sharing any of the quote unquote positive content or or anything like that because. It is hard to get caught up in the, just like you said, there's a lot of people who are just posting those like, go out and do it, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And it's it literally just is kind of like that influencer culture mm -hmm. where I feel like it does muddy up so much of anything that's authentically being shared. And, and I always worry about getting caught up. I mean, this podcast in itself is, yeah. is about, you know, real, raw, inspiring, authentic stories, whatever mm -hmm. it is in the hopes of motivating somebody or inspiring somebody. Yeah. And even though like I love having these conversations and I love sharing the content from it, mm -hmm. even when I'm posting it, I'm like, is somebody going to take this the wrong way and just yeah. think that we're like fabricating this thing? And it's like, it's so weird that it's become such a cliche to be positive. positive. Yeah. I was thinking that today, you know, it's so funny you say that I was in the airport and I shouldn't be saying that, um, but I was in the <laughs> airport and, you know, these two kids were just kind of, like, screaming and running around. But, like, they were having so much fun. Like, the just sim the simplistic running around something, the little brother chasing big brother. And I was like, man, like, two years ago, I probably would have been like, man, if these kids, like, don't shut up. Like, get your kids. But I was like, man, like, look at these kids having fun. Like, that's awesome. Like, they're smiling. They're having a good time. It's like, you know, there's so much chaos in the world. And it's like, that to me showed me like how much I had grown because I didn't get mad that like kids were having fun. Mm -hmm. You know, some people would sit there like, man, like, oh, people don't know how to train their kids. It's like, why are you mad that kids are having fun in an airport? Like, right. You know, right. so um, I, I think like the, the key thing is just to reprogram your mind. And like, that's what I've been doing too is like, instead of focusing on the people that might say something, I want to focus on the people that need it. Yes. And that's the big thing. I, so. And I, I, 
love to hear you say that because mm-hmm. I feel like that is almost the biggest thing that maybe is the hardest to unlock yeah. when you're trying to kind of spread that message yeah. or, or for lack of a better term, build your social media around that mm-hmm. or make that a part of your social media. Right. Because again, you don't want to like feel like, oh, am I trying to be an influencer? Am I, or am I trying to act like I know everything? Like, I think that's yeah. the biggest thing that a lot of people take it as is like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, and, and I've never really had anyone directly say this to me Yeah. because for years now I've, I've been on that like positive energy train. Right. Right. Like not always the best at it for myself, mm-hmm. but I've always been outwardly yeah. focused on like, how can I try and maybe make someone else feel better? Yeah. And, I, and that's how, the hard thing is like, you know, um, for yourself, it's not always easy. No. <laughs> no. So you're like, man, how can I help other people when I'm struggling? <laughs> right, right. And it, it's, I feel like it's always so easy to help somebody else rather yeah. than help yourself. Because you can see someone else's problem and be like, well, here's, here's what you've <laughs> right, got to yeah. do. Or here's how I th-. And then you're in the same problem and you're just like, I have not even the slightest clue of not what sure. to do. But I, I always worry about coming off that way online because you know yes it's content and yes it's you know for this podcast in in particular of course it's content to promote the podcast right but it's more so to shed light on here's this section of this conversation that i think is valuable for someone to hear or that i got a heavy value out of right here's a part of this person's story that i think is great or inspiring or whatever it is and i think it is very easy to to look at those things and be like oh my gosh like you're just trying you're just trying to act positive and i think that's probably a whole other conversation on its own outside of social media is the idea that positive thinking means that you believe nothing is bad Ooh, i've had so i'm so glad you touched on that because i've had this conversation with people and i think they just like they always feel that you know positive people just Nothing is going wrong in the world. Everything's just like, it's so easy to be positive. It's like, no, it's actually harder because on the days where I want to give up, I have to fight my mind compared to someone who might be negative. You just kind of fall into that trap. And that's why it's so hard to be positive because like, like when you do think negative, like negatively, like you're just like, whatever, like, this is me. This is how I am. And you can just like, if, if you're trying to get in shape, oh, I shouldn't eat this pizza, but like, whatever, I'm not in shape anyways. Oh, like I'm trying to get better at being organized. It's like, oh, I don't need to make my bed. Like I'm our, I'm a messy person anyways, instead of like fighting your mind and like doing actually what you're supposed to be doing. And like, that's what irks me about, you know, when people say that about positive people, I'm like, no, like we struggle maybe harder because we're fighting two different sides of our mind. Mm -hmm. Um, It's so funny. I actually just watched a TED talk on procrastination and I can't remember the, the names, the scientific names, but there's two parts of your brain, you know, one that wants pleasure and like one that obviously wants to like get things done. And like, you just kind of have to train those parts, you know, one to be stronger than the other. And I think for me, that's been the biggest thing is like training that part of, you know, the positive part, the hardworking part, you know, to, to overtake my subconscious when it's like, oh, should I work out today? No, like, don't do it. Like the roads are bad. Like you don't even have a workout plan. Oh, now it's like no like you need to work out like you've been doing good for a week right um you live right down the street like you'll be fine you know like now that part of my mind is like speaking over you know the negative part you know so it, it really is finding that balance and i feel like for so long i'm always so back and forth on that stuff because mm-hmm. again it's like it's so easy for people to perceive that as something different but it feeds into just what you said of right. like well, hey, I'm sharing this stuff or saying this stuff for the people that want to hear it. Mm-hmm. And for anybody who does look at it and say like, oh, you're just pretending everything's okay. It's like, honestly, when I'm sharing this positive advice, I'm, I'm usually giving a, 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 not a lesson, but an example of what made me think this way. Like, yeah. hey, things are really hard, but here's what I'm doing to get through it or here's what I did to get through it. Yep. And I'm just putting this out there in hopes that maybe – somebody else can relate to it and maybe feel a little bit differently. And I feel like where things have gone now is, and I, and I don't know, I would honestly love your thoughts on this. If, if you feel like there's a battle back and forth of like, is quote unquote positive mindset or that sort of stuff being more accepted or has it just went from zero to 100 and just immediately became this like, Oh yeah. A lot of people do just look at it as like influencer culture or they just think of like, you know, one of the greatest examples I feel like I can give is like, is Nike and just do it. 
Mm. I feel like nobody really digs into the idea of what just do it is or what that could mean. <laughs> it just sounds good. They're just like, just oh yeah, that's just uh, that's just Nike. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just the Nike thing. Where to me, and sorry, I'm I'm trailing no, you're good, deeper you're down good. the rabbit hole, but I love rabbit holes. <laughs> for for me, I feel like thinking of like looking at the phrase just do it. Mm-hmm. I feel like it can easily be taken the wrong way in in the sense of like those people who don't want to maybe dig deeper into like, well, what does that mean or what can that mean to me? I think a lot of people put too much weight on something like, oh, just do it. Just get out there, bro, and just blah, 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 because it makes them feel like if they don't immediately succeed and win, that it's just a complete failure. Yeah. Where to me, it's almost like maybe instead of just do it, maybe shift it into like just try it. Just try it. Like that's it. Just try it. Just yeah. go and try it. And technically, that's the exact same thing. But I feel like almost like – the easiest example and the easiest way I can explain it is like people hear things like just do it. And again, they're like, oh, it's, oh, it's that easy, huh? Yeah. I'll just go do it. When it's like, well, no, understand yeah. that just trying it is, is the win there. Well, so it's, that actually all ties in. You have to think it all ties back into marketing. And uh, to go to your original first question, do you know, do I think it's something being accepted or do I think it's something like going towards like basic, basically like commercialized? That's anything in our society now, whether it's if you're into fitness, people who aren't exactly personal trainers have 20,000 people on Instagram following them doing workouts. If you're doing a podcast, someone who's never even set up a soundboard now has a podcast or they're on their phone making one. Um, if you like to make food, you, like anybody has an opportunity now to be an influencer and whatever without having technically the certification. There's people out there that our DJs, and this is like throwing no shade, but it's like, you know, I've been at it for like eight years. And like, there's people out there that, you know, have 50,000 followers from doing maybe like a simple mix. So it just goes to show you that like anything and anyone can commercialize themselves or a product. So when I see like people doing, you know, positivity stuff, I'm just, I'm like, it sucks because like you want to make sure people are being led the right way. But at the same time, like I hope someone that's following a person on a, you know, a fitness page doesn't get on the squat rack and just start doing whatever that person said without the right techniques, things like that. So, you know, it all ties in, but I think you can always tell the real, as the saying goes, real recognize real. Mm -hmm. You can tell when someone's being like a fake positive, like they're trying to be commercialized and you can tell when someone's like, it's coming from their heart. And I think that's what it all boils down to is just being able to just like decipher like, okay, who's trying to do this for, you know, uh, financial gain or who's trying to do something like, you know, because they really want to help people. So I think it all just boils down to that. But yeah, I mean, we live and I, I hate to say it because like I kind of do like influencer type stuff now, but my stuff is more like giveaway. I like to do giveaways because like I like to just like give people stuff, but mm-hmm. I can't keep using my own money. So I started using right. other companies money. I'm, right, like, right. I'm like, why don't you guys donate some gift cards? But like, you know, um, I think, yeah, it just all depends, man, on like what you're trying to use it for. And then you know, just the type of person you are. There are some people that need to hear, just do it, Mm -hmm. you know, but then there's some people that also need to hear like, Hey, just, just try it. You know? So I think it all, I think it all just depends, but it all comes down to, to marketing, unfortunately in our society. So going back a little bit, you mentioned earlier, like how hard the balance is Mm -hmm. of, and this is such a like modernized like conversation now, but like the balance of actively producing content that, that is is both trying to be authentic and hopefully motivate or inspire somebody or make them think or whatever. Mm-hmm. What's that been like for you? Because I'm like, I'm yeah. really curious because I know, again, we've already been talking so much about it, but I feel like it's it's so hard to keep up with social media. Oh, like, I'm way more than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just feel like it's such a battle of like, there's so many times where, I'll be like, oh man, like I, I probably should post or I should yeah. probably share something. Or there's even times where I do have a thought that I'm like, I, I really, I kind of want to open up in this caption or whatever. And I, I really want to put this thought out there. Maybe I can motivate somebody by sharing the story. But even the energy that it takes to create that post sometimes is too much. Yeah. Are you, do you ever feel that at all? Or are you like, hey, you know what? Like I make it happen and it's like, yeah, this year has been huge because, like, just of the goals I have for, like, my, my brand. And so, like, I'm on that same wavelength where I'm like, dude, like, I got I to gotta get a picture taken this week. I got to, you know, put a mix out. I got. I think the key is, so I, I think I heard this once, like, in business. It's, like, rich people, like, 
they don't do everything. They right. have right. other, like, they're smart, like, th- they have other people do it for them. And, like, that's how they're able to, like, focus their time on, like, what they need to focus on. So that's kind of been, like, my goal this year is, like, how can I produce content on a large scale without using all of my energy? I don't mm-hmm. want to make an hour mix every month, every week. I don't want to, you know, do a bunch of stuff. It's like I really just want to sit on my couch and, you know, watch, you know, some some stuff on YouTube. But um, for me, as I was saying, I was start doing the giveaways. So now, you know, I'll reach out to a company that, you know, I think, you know, I'll come up with an idea. Um I mean, I'm trying to think of what I just did. Um, so this, I'm sure this will be out after Valentine's Day, so I can say it. But um, so I work with Grandview Cafe, and I really wanted to do something for Valentine's Day. I was like, but I don't want to keep like. Sometimes I'll come out of pocket, and I'm like, dude, like you can't keep doing that. You know, it's like not not good for the bank account. Um, so I was like, I want to do something for Valentine's Day. Like I wanted to just you know help a couple out, just like you know give them a first date, like a gift card or something. So I reached out to GVC and I was like, hey, I want to do this. Like, would you guys like to be a sponsor or be a partner? Yada, yada. Like, oh yeah, for sure. Like we could be be like a sole partner. I was like, okay, let me know how much you can give. And if it's not enough, I'll match it. If it's enough, then cool. So they're like, oh, we can do $25. I'm like, cool, I'll give 25. And then I came up with the hashtag. um, I think it was love with a grand view or a grand view of love or something because they're grand view cafe, something cheesy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's just going to be, you know, basically typical influencer rules, you know, follow. Um, and then, but it's going to be post a picture from like when you first started dating or like your first date and then tag us in the story. And so like I've been trying to find ways to take a little bit of like that influencer life, but also keep my authentic, like authenticity, yeah. excuse me. Totally. Um, so that way, like, it's not just like, oh, are you an influencer now? It's like, yeah, I am. But at the same time, like, how cool is it to see couples posting their first date, you know, or when they first start dating instead of just being, hey, tag me. Hey, make sure you follow. It's like, yeah, we want to do that. But at the same time, like, we want it to be, want it to be organic and, like, fun and, like, you know, cute, whatever, for the couple. So right, right. Um, I think it's just been, like, trying to take a little bit of being organic and then taking a little bit of the business, the game, you know, and just, you know, mixing all up. So And I think there's, like, there's nothing wrong with, doing things in a promotional way or a marketed way or the business way when you know your intention and purpose. Yeah, exactly. Like when you put intention into something or you put a deeper purpose or a meaning or whatever it is into something, that means that whatever you're doing, yes, it can be more in a business sense or it can be more in a marketing sense, but it's still authentic. For sure. It's like, just like you said, it's not just like, well, I just want all the attention and tag me and talk about me and blah blah blah. It's, we don't gain anything from it. I literally I get right, nothing right. from it. Like I, maybe I get. Some, but the thing is, I guess I'll I'm trying to gain the followers. But it's like the more I get, the more I can do stuff. Oh, one hundred percent. And that's what is important to me. It's like, do I want a lot of followers? Yes. That way I can reach more people and get more things done. It's like I can only do so much with what I have. And it's like, you know, one of my um my slogans is like, until you do it. Do what you do what you can with what you have before you want to do with what you want. Because if you can't do it with this, you won't be able to do it with that. If you can't be happy with five dollars, you're not gonna be happy with five hundred. If you can't, you know, be happy with five followers, you're not gonna be happy with five million. So like that's just like been my thing is like, you know, focus on what you have and then as it grows, you grow. So um but yeah, I totally agree with what you said. So And I I love the idea of do what you can with what you have. Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel like that's huge and while it's not always easy to remember like you know you're always going to get caught up on like well if i had this i could do this and blah 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 but it is that idea of just like well just just try it now just Just do it it now (laughs) (laughs) this podcast better be sponsored by night right where's phil at we need to call him so something i want to know is like when did you make this shift in social like when when were you like okay how can i put more intention into the things i do or how can i even even outside of like the giveaways or the marketing stuff, like when did you say like, all right, I just want to start talking about positivity and, and sharing yeah. positive messages on my social? So, man, that's that story is I always try to like summarize the best I can. But I wanna say it started when it started when I got hurt in track. I used to run track uh collegiately and I got hurt. Um and so when I was in high school, I didn't really have, you know, as as most kids don't, I didn't really have a, a lane or I didn't have, a, what's the word I'm looking for? 
um, a sense of self. You know, I didn't I didn't know where I necessarily belonged. You know, I was a black kid, went to a mostly predominantly white school in the suburbs. So I was always like battling like like, you know, where like where do I belong? And so I joined the track team, was pretty damn good at it, and that kinda of became like who I was, like oh the the good the kid that's good at track, you know. Um, that was my calling, you know, as your family. When you get so good at something in high school, your family's like, this is your purpose. This is your calling. Right. My mom's like, you're going to the Olympics. I'm like, Olympics? I'm like, just started last year, you know, so they were super excited. Um, and so, you know, for some time, like, that became who I was. Like, track was my life. You know, I was like, okay, like, this is what I was born to do. And then I got hurt. You know, I tore my hamstring two, three times in the season. I tried to come back, messed it up again. And then, like, the last – it was, like, conference, and when coaches were, like, dude, we're, like, we need you to try. And I was, like, okay, anything for the team. And then I – in warm-ups, I got messed up. And so, you know, I thought I co- would come back, and I just um, was never the same and really couldn't run. My hamstrings, like, still still bothers me sometimes. And so I went through this phase of just, like, you know, being in solitude because I went to a private school. There's, like, 3,000 kids on campus – um and so while my teammates are at practice you got to remember we're in class all day too so they're at practice i'm in my dorm room like by myself and these are guys and girls i'm used to seeing every day i'm joking with every day like it's routine and so um you know they're at practice and then like you know uh, they usually go eat dinner late i'm like i'm not gonna wait all night to go eat dinner with them like it's you know they're not gonna get done till eight or nine and i'm like so i would eat dinner by myself um so i kind of just like went down this like dark hole of just like losing like self-image and like not feeling like i was worthy of anything not knowing like where i was going with my life like yeah i was in school but it's like i really didn't want to like i didn't want to be there you know so um yeah i just went down like a very dark spot i got in a very dark place and you know i just got really depressed my anxiety kicked in and then i just remember like i was like, i don't want to live like this like this isn't me i'm a happy guy like i'm a positive guy and so i just you know started looking up quotes every day download a little app i'd watch like videos like motivational videos in the morning before class my uh roommates got sick of me after a while because i I was trying to keep them so positive but um you know i was just trying to crawl back out of that hole you know because it had lasted for a while you know not knowing what i was going to do and there's a lot more to the story too um i just it would take so long to tell it but Honestly, this is the place for us. I know, right? I know. <laughs> wherever, wherever you want to take us, we can go. Oh, no, yeah. It was just, it was bad. Like, you know, my my coach took my scholarship and like, you know, I was, you, it sucks, man. College sports is so grimy and like I mm, lost a lot of respect for college sports. But yeah, like I had like, it was the last semester. Uh, it was like spring semester. Like we only had, you know, maybe two, three months left to school. My coach was like, yeah, like we're going to take your scholarship. I'm like, dude, this is a private school. Like, it's expensive. Like, it's not like I'm quitting because I don't want to be on the team. I can't physically run. And he basically was like, well, you can't do anything for me. I can't do anything for you type of situation. So, like, that hurt. Like, that hurt, you know, to kind of put your trust in someone, you know, especially coming into a program. It was the first year of the of the um, program, too. But it's it's sports. It's business. Like, whatever. It's just, like I said, it's grimy. Um, and so like that kind of hurt. I wasn't sure like if I was going to be able to run or, you know, stay in school Then my grades were dropping. It was just like a whirlwind of like, you know, being like 19, 20 years old, trying to figure out life, just, you know, lost. And so, um, yeah, just a bunch of stuff was going on. And then, like I said, I just, I didn't want to feel that way. And so started reading up, listening up on things. And then, um, I think I I took a semester off was just DJing and then, you know, just still trying to focus on, on me. So I kind of start doing like more just like long distance runs that didn't require as much speed and strength. So that kept me active and like kept me positive. And then like all the quotes I would share, I would just be on my Instagram. Like, Hey guys, I quote of the day, or I got put a quote up and you know, um, just the feedback was great. People would hit me up and like, like, you really don't know how much it really helped me to like see this or hear this. Like you just, you know, made my day. And I'm like, Oh, shit like hey you're welcome like it was more for me you know but yeah i wanted to share and so um i noticed that and i was doing like jokes of the day just anything to like give people like you know a smile or anything like that and so um fast forward you know like i just kind of stayed on the positivity train and then i moved out to arizona post-graduation um but i kind of went back down another hole at ohio state after i transferred um just you know transferring from a small school going to osu 
being a DJ, you know, I kind of, uh, I was doing good. It was kind of like, a chick, 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 and then I kind of went right back down. Um, man, I was just partying all the time, not caring about school. Uh, just, you know, <laughs> doing college things. Right, right. And uh, grades were slipping. I was on academic probation. And I was like, what am I, I was like, what am I doing? Like, I made it to, like, because to me, Ohio State is like, that's, that's my Harvard. You know, that mm-hmm. was like, for me, that was huge. Um, and so I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're going to throw it all away. Like, you never even imagined yourself being a Buckeye. Like, you didn't have the grades. You weren't fast enough. And it's like, now you get to be here and enjoy it. And you're going to just, like, throw it all away. So I was like, oh, man, I got to get it together. And so, yeah, I did that. Um, was on XM probation, got my grades up. And uh, moved out to Arizona. And it was like another, you know, came back up, <laughs> right back down. <laughs> Uh, just it was just rough, man. Just I had expectations, didn't go as planned, financial hardships, things like that. And so, but I, you know, I was like, man, I gotta just stay positive. And then so I kind of just really, I just dug deeper, um, you know, started sharing stuff again, getting my friends involved. And then um, I said, I knew I was gonna move back at one point, and I said, when I get back, I wanted to spread positivity, but like more in person. I was like, it's cool to do this, you know, over the phone, you know, on Facebook, on twitter but i was like i want to do this in person like so i can really reach people so that's kind of how yeah long story sorry for him but dude it's great um yeah that's kind of how it all came together for you know it's a little bit so for you personally during all those like ups and downs like you know you mentioned earlier that it was sort of like i guess for lack of a better term an identity crisis yeah when when you know the sports aspect gets taken out of it Mm -hmm. What what were you shifting into? Like, what were you going to school for? Like, right. was there was there something where you were like, okay, I'm going to school for this thing that I have enough inter- interest in, right? Or was it I just need to try and and graduate college so I have a piece of paper? Or was there any sort of balance there? Or for a second with track, there was um, because like I knew I wouldn't be a track athlete forever, so I was like, okay, like I'm gonna enjoy these years of track, and I know when I get done. I'm going to probably end up getting a job. And I went to school for basically communications and public relations, which I was excited about. I wanted to, you know, work, um, you know, maybe for a firm or uh, what was it? Um, Just like be like a PR for like maybe an athlete or something like that. Like I was excited about that. And then I was introduced to DJing and like all that kind of just went out the window. And so it was like, I got to a point where it was, it was kind of crazy how it, um, all meshed together and i i vividly remember my track coach sitting he's like are you just trying to quit so you can go dj and i was like dude are you freaking serious like like very it was just a very emotional meeting and like obviously i still and dude you're talking to a guy that doesn't remember where he puts his keys half the time like i vividly remember like these emotions and feelings um and so like you know djing was like starting to kind of pick up for me and i was like kind of getting good at it and i was like you know like gonna just try this and so that became like my main focus, um, I, especially with taking a semester off. I took a semester off and I was making like all this cash. And my parents were like, are you going to go back to school? And I was like, for what? <laughs> I was like, right. what do I need to go to school for? You know, I'm making money. Is it like, well, it's just like, you know, my dad was like, you should just, you know, get your degree. You know, you know how dads are. Like, just, just do it. Right. And so um, I was like, all right, I'll go back to school. And then um, it was funny when I was looking for schools to be readmitted in, it was all party schools. Cause I'm like, well, if I'm DJing, I was looking at like, um, was it UCF down in Florida, huge party school, ASU, which is ironic because I ended up moving out there, um, OU, obviously, because my thought was, if I'm gonna go somewhere for school and I'm DJing, like I want to go somewhere where I can build the brand too. That like, makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I was like, yeah, like I'm gonna go have fun. I'm like, I can probably still skip, you know, skim my, get skim my grades. You know, I, I'll, I'll be able to get by. And so. Um, that was my logic, but um, I applied to Ohio State to transfer because, like I said, I grew up a Buckeye, like a huge Buckeye, still a huge Buckeye. Um, but I was like, I'm not going to get in. I'm not going to be able to transfer. Like, these kids are so smart. And they're like, oh, you've been accepted. I was like, oh, they're just letting anybody in these days. I was like, all right, cool. Um, and so I stayed here in Columbus, and then probably the best decision I've made. And everything kind of from there just kind of took off. And, you know, for those years, like, I was always a positive person, but I wasn't, you know, um, where I'm at now. It wasn't until I got, like, a little bit older where I was like, okay, like, I really want to start using – well, I didn't have an influence. So, like, once I 
whatever that means had clout influence i was like well i want to use this for good you know like people follow me they for some reason like me so i was like you know i'll, I'll use it for i use my powers for good and not evil so right right yeah. okay so i want i want to dig into where you even found djing mm-hmm. but i want to i want to go back a little bit first so are you born and raised ohio no Oh, okay. yeah, Ohio, yeah, sorry. So okay. I'm from Medina. It's uh, northeast Ohio, about 25, 30 minutes outside of Cleveland. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So what was what was growing up like? Now, I know you said earlier, like way, you know, when we first started this and we got into the positive right. talk, you said that kind of like influence was kind of always there. I yeah. think it was, was it mom that you said was like kind of? I mean, you know, the, coll- my, the collection of my family, man, like we're very like, man, when I was in high school, we used to, my mom was so shocked. I would have, I'm like, mom, can I have friends over for like, just like a little bonfire? She's like, yeah. Next thing you know, she's like, why are there 20 kids in my backyard? I'm like, you suck, I have friends over. She's like, okay, I didn't think you're going to have 20 friends over. But then, like I said, she runs a nonprofit too. And like my family, we're just like a very like host type family, like where we like to, you know, have other people come over, things like that. So um, kind of came from that. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Sorry, kind of. No, it literally just kind of laying out like what what was growing up like for you. Oh yeah, um, yeah, just you know, it was it was good. Had a nice, it was a great household. It's just you kind of don't recognize things till you get older. Like I said, growing up in a predominantly you know white high school, you know a lot of microaggressions. Which at the time you're like, oh, like whatever. And then you get older, you're like, mm, probably shouldn't have been accepting that. Right. Um, but I mean, I kind of got along with everyone. You know, popular kids, kids with special needs, kids that were just like typical day of the mill just here so i can graduate kids you know kids that were going to you know brown lehigh things like that so but i don't know i just always like yo like everyone's cool in my book you know so that's always how i was and um i don't know it's just how i always been man like i just love interacting with just like you know whether you make 20 million or like whether you make 10 an hour like it doesn't matter to me like you know so i just wanted to get to know everybody um but yeah it's just i mean i had my times where you know I got maybe a little bit bullied or, you know, things were said, but I never really let it get to me too much. Like I said, my mom was very good at instilling those properties within me and, you know, kind of feeding my mind the right things to, you know, when those type of battles came about, I was just kind of like, all right, well, that's not that big a deal or uh, like I'll get past it. So, um, but yeah, other than that, just it wasn't too bad, but. Now, while you're growing up, like, what is what is the first thing that kind of catches your attention? Now, like, obviously, kids have an imagination. They love right. creativity. They love sports. They love whatever. But was there something while you were growing up that, like, I, I know, was it, was it, like, track that, like, when you were young, you no. were like, this is the thing? Or did entertainment, you yeah. know, pop up then? And now that's, of For course, sure. led you here. Like, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's videos of me dancing in front of, like, you know, Notorious B.I.G. and uh, and P. Diddy to um, their song "Mo Money Mo Problems." You know, my 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 dad has a video of that, and I, I always cracks me up watching it. And then, like for some odd reason, I had this weird obsession with tap dancing <laughs> when I was younger, or river dancing. It was. Um, my grandma will tell you that story. I think I saw it on TV one dance, and just like the way like they were able to like make like beats and sound with their feet i was like yo that's cool so i just started doing it they're like what's wrong with you dude like i'm just like i want to be a river dancer they're like no <laughs> this is not gonna you're not gonna be a river dancer i mean i'm like you know at the time i'm like probably like nine or ten you know just you know kids are you just see something cool you're like i want to do that my um, river dancing everywhere you go hey <laughs> man kroger doesn't matter i'm in there um but yeah i think just like i love entertainment and i you know that's why i say like I don't even like being called like DJ League because like I don't want to just be known as like a DJ. Like I want, I, I want like who I who I am to be like so many different things. Like you can't even put your finger on it. Yes. And yeah. I think, and this is about to be a rabbit hole session. I think um, that's like the problem with society now is just like we've been so cultivated to believe like oh you can only be a doctor, oh you can only be a fireman, oh you can only be a chef, you know you can only be a teacher. And it's like, but we are able to do so many things and like we just get made to believe that like one thing is all we're allowed to do it's like oh like well i'm a teacher and like i love to cook and i would love to have my own cooking show during the summer so i'm not teaching but but what do it like, yes that just irritates me so much i i could not agree more and this is like <laughs> that that's a conversation that i have all the time because so for me personally we'll we'll trail off into this rabbit hole for a second <laughs> I, I definitely want to love rabbit holes. So. 
you know, for me individually, I feel like I, I constantly, and this is fine. I'm not saying it's like a negative thing, mm-hmm. but I definitely have noticed I, I constantly have to explain what I do. Yeah. Now I understand that. Of course, you know, we're meeting for the first time and right. I'm sure you're like, yeah, dude, what? Okay. We're <laughs> podcasting and you said something about video directing, but what do you do? Yeah. Where like, sure, there's like certain labels I could give of like, well, all in all, everything I do could be summed up as like creative director, mm-hmm. right? Because I'll, I'll, I can design, but I can do photo, but I can do video, but I'm literally directing the sets, but I'm podcast, you know, all this sort of stuff, building brands, whatever it is. Right. But it's the exact same thing that you just said. For me, like I don't sit and I'm not just like, yep, I am a director. I, and it's because that means I direct videos and I do nothing right. else. You know, oh, I, I'm a podcaster. Oh, so what? Do, what's your job? I don't understand. Yeah. You do podcasts, but what's your, you know, it's like it is always that label mentality of like, okay, but you're supposed to be a thing. Yeah. And that that is something that I feel like I consistently talk about with so many people. And I am so in favor of people just trying and doing anything Man, they want to yeah. do. And obviously it comes down to, you know, whatever like if you really want to do it and and Mm -hmm. the balance of actually pursuing it but balancing whatever else you've got going on in your life 100 percent. there's there's many variables that play into it but it's all possible and and i 100 percent agree that it it is this weird you know standard in society that has been in place for so many years that it, it is that classic like i feel like it obviously derived from like the white picket fence sort of like yeah. mentality of like go to school graduate go to college graduate dad's man in the house mom yeah does the dishes like, those are and that's kind of crazy too man like when you look back and like people really like women you really used to just go to school to find a husband and it's like men literally like would just learn one craft and like rest their life monday through friday that's all they did mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. i go to work i come home food's made kids are doing the homework maybe we watch some tv at night as a family go to bed same thing next day no there's no way i could have lived in, in, in those times i would have lost my mind and and i feel like i even noticed that or felt that even when i was young yeah where i was just like i just like yes when you're growing up you like to just do anything you can mm-hmm. But for me, like the older I got and I started identifying what my strengths were or things that I wanted to get involved in or learn or whatever, it was always just like, I don't, I want to do everything. (laughs) And I I can't really explain a direct reason why, if there has to be, but I just love doing everything. And something you said earlier, I think is super important. And I, I totally agree with it is that you know, we were talking about the social media thing and you were like, if I get more followers, it allows me to have a wider reach and do more things. Right. I look at at careers or success in life the exact same way where people will always ask me, what's your goal? Well, I want to do a lot of things. Cool. But what's your goal? And they're expecting the answer to be, I want to be a millionaire director. That's what I want to do. I want to make a million dollars and make the coolest movie ever. Where to me, If I can just have anything that I do succeed in any sort of way, it's going to help me grow all the other things I want to do because, again, it could change at some point. But right now, I want to do so many different things. And yes, they all kind of web back to, like, I'm the core of those things. So I am am the constant amongst all those things that bring them together Mm -hmm. and my wants and needs within them. But I just want to do a ton of things. So then if something works... Great. I'm not just going to hang my cap on that and be like, I'm done. I don't need to try anymore. I'm going to be like, awesome. I got, you know, recognition for this thing. So now I can maybe easier or get better traction with these other things and make them have a greater purpose and make them accomplish more. And I feel like for sure when it comes into, I don't know, life standards or, or the standard of society or whatever, like, I feel like it, it's super important, and I, I really just wish more people would identify yeah. what they're capable of. And again, it, it leans into the positivity thing that we've been talking about. Like Somebody could be listening to this or watching it and be like, well, yeah, you two want to do things, so of course you're going to say it's like the thing people should do. But it, it's really not that. It's like obviously it comes down to, hey, person, yeah. do you want to do these things? 
Okay. I'm not saying you have to. Right, yeah. Nobody has to go do a podcast just because I really enjoy doing mine. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to go be a DJ or, or right. use their social media in a certain way just because you do or just because you said something on something. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, again, like that almost misidentification, misidentification that people make when it comes to pursuing goals or right. a positive mindset or whatever it is, because again, people have been so trained on that kind of one track mind of yeah. like, well, if I don't get this piece of paper from college that says I am capable of doing this one job. Yeah. And then if I don't do that one job, I don't know what I'm going to do when it's like, they don't even let themselves have hobbies a lot of the yeah, times. It's crazy. You don't have to make everything a career. It's very but sad. Yeah. Like and it's, it's strange, you know? And, yeah. and, I don't know. Like, do you do you feel like that? Do you feel like it's shifting at all? Do you oh, feel like I do. There's, you I do? think I think entrepreneurship is gonna help. It's gonna help and hurt a lot of people. You know, um, I think you have to be mentally ready to be an entrepreneur. Um, and the only way to do that is, like we keep saying, is just to do it. But just to also keep going. You know, it's we're 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 seeing a shift in society where people can almost like like they're making their own money they don't have to depend on going to to school or getting a certification you know like if you can sell something and you're good at it like you can sell it you mm -hmm. know and so uh i think i think we're definitely shifting that way but um i don't know man i mean it's it's just like the world is just like i don't know i feel like the world right now is like just so up in the air that like you really should just go after it because like nothing's normal anymore. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that nothing's normal. And so like, that's how I look at it when people are like, Oh, like you think you're an influencer now? It's like, no, but like, why not try it? Like other people are doing it and they're, you know, making a, a killing or they're being successful or they're reaching more people. Like, why would I not try it? It's like, that's, that's kind of how I look at people or look at things now. It's like, if I see someone is doing something and they came for, I came from where I came from then like, yeah, I, I'm going to think it's possible. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like I see someone who can act and also put mixes out and does what – like, yeah, like that just goes to show you like, okay, you really can do what you want. Yes. So. Some of my biggest influences I feel like that that like in the last couple of years have made me, I don't know, just, just make it feel more real or not more real. I guess real is maybe the wrong term, but more – um I don't more more realistic maybe or more possible of not just accomplishing it but like it's reasonable to do are people like like your uh, Donald Glovers of the world mm -hmm. and Jordan Peels yeah. and 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 if, clearly there's there's yeah. millions of Will people Smith that Will Smith has been huge for me yeah He's and it's just and, and the reason I say those people is is because they're like it's like Jordan Peele goes from like being on Key and Peele being a comedian comedy writer and an actor and all this sort of stuff makes a transition to writing and directing and, and still, yeah. but still acting and then doing like voiceover stuff. And Donald Glover, I feel like is a gigantic example of that where it's like, he's a musician, he's mm -hmm. a voice actor, he's an actor, he's a writer, he's a director, he's yeah. a producer. He like does it all, all of those things. And again, there's a list of millions of people that we could give for those things. But I feel like those are always the one that mainly come to my mind because they've set that bar mm -hmm. or that example of like, Hey, you could act and direct in your own thing and you don't have to choose and one way or it. another. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, I'm sure there's people that have done that before them and, and all that sort of stuff. But it's like you see Donald Glover uh, be like the voice of an animated Spider-Man and also, you know, writing and producing and acting in Atlanta and then also will pop up and be like, Hey, um, new album coming soon. Yeah. Like I'm still doing that. Yeah, too. the same like, guy on Parks and Rec is like on Atlanta, and it's like, and, and that, that <laughs> same person used to do stand up comedy, yeah. and like, again, it's just like, why not just try yeah. all of those things? And and to the point that we were talking about, like I, I feel like with the, maybe the positives of influencer culture mm -hmm. or YouTube culture and stuff like that, it is showing people that like. There's a market for almost everything. And anyone. And anybody. Yeah. Like, so if you can figure out how you can tap into that, like, and also set your goals. Yeah. Like, that's huge too. Not getting caught up in, like, well, I tried to post positive content and I didn't get as much interaction as Gary V did. You know what I mean? It's like, well, yeah. but that's okay though, because somebody saw what but you Gary saw. Gary V didn't. You know, the thing too, man, is like, 
and I listened to a video this the other day, talked about comparison. Like, not everybody starts at the same starting line. Mm -hmm. So, like, I could be, and this is me tapping in my track references. Like, I, I said the other day, a personal record for someone could also be someone's slowest time. So while person A is like, man, like I just PR today, they're so happy that they hit that time because they've seen growth. The other person might, man, this is like my slowest time in a while. So it's like, you can't go off of somebody else because mm -hmm. it's never, it's never gonna make sense right. to compare. You know, somebody getting a thousand likes for them, that might be a terrible post. Like, oh my god, I got a thousand today. I usually get three. To you, it's like, oh my god, we got a thousand likes. Like, wow, we're on the, like, we're on the up. You know, mm -hmm. we're swinging up. So like I I definitely don't compare the way I say it is like okay I get a hundred views a hundred people just watched this and maybe got something out of it maybe only five did but like I have to always remind myself because it's easy to to get off track what it's about because when you sometimes with content like you do get upset like man like the engagement's not there but it's like if one person can reach out and be like yo like what's up with the videos man like they were kind of helping me get through my day it's like oh snap like dang my bad dude like i wasn't getting a lot of interaction so i just didn't think anybody cared it's like no nah, man like it's been helping me and it's like that's what matters the most and i think when you keep that focus you're all, like you're always gonna win like people look at winning with numbers but it's not always about numbers it's about you know like the value that you can give to the people that are interacting with you mm -hmm. so if you can get you know a hundred people to watch your video and maybe only like two likes but one of those likes stop someone from committing suicide that day it's like how much more worth that and valuable is that compared to like you know getting a thousand likes mm -hmm. maybe from some bots maybe from some friends that people don't care you know what i mean so it's like just keeping your focus on like what's important like that's what i've been like trying to really like hone in on it's like it's gonna grow it's gonna grow plants don't shoot up in a day you know what i mean trees don't shoot up in a day it's like it's gonna grow just keep planting the seeds and watering them and everything will be fine like that's and Man, that's 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 so important. And like and obviously the comparison game is always yeah. a hard thing that everybody's gonna battle with at all times. Mm -hmm. But like in the past, like I, I've caught myself and had to like refresh my like, okay, like hold on, like what what are my goals here? I've caught myself comparing myself to to people who do something that I don't even want to do, yeah, but they're finding success in it, and I'm like, what? <laughs> how come they're getting those opportunities? And it's right. like what do you mean? Like yeah. you're not even trying to get those same opportunities. Nope. So you can't just compare like, oh, well, they got a win with what they're doing, but I didn't. It's like, no, you just got a different win. Yeah. You know, so it's like I love that. There were people like, especially in like the the you know, creative world, the freelance self-employed world or whatever, you know, there'd be so many times where I'd see like a, a creative that I follow online, you know, one of them uh post a new job that they did, you know, shooting a cool music video or commercial or whatever. And I'm like, well, why didn't I get that? And it's like, well, look what you're focused on. <laughs> right, right. And it's like, well, what, what am I trying to to do those things? Did I am I actively trying to do exactly what they did? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean of like, okay, cool. They shared some cool work of like one of the big things that I would get caught up in is uh I did like live photography for a little while. Okay. And realistically, it literally was just for fun. And when it comes to touring and stuff like that, I honestly never wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like, I did a couple small tours, but I just, I don't know, I just like being home. I like being close to yeah. home. Like, I just, I just don't know. So it was never a goal of mine to be an actively touring live photographer. Okay. But I followed so many and I would see them shoot like awesome shows or get off some tour opportunities or whatever. Right. And I'd be like, why are they getting that? What the heck? <laughs> but I'm not even, I don't even want yeah, that thing want, that they got. Being greedy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like catching myself of like, hold on. Yeah. I literally don't want that thing that they have. So why, why am I being jealous about that? Why am I being caught up on that and not just focusing harder yeah. on, okay, what are the things that I want and how do I keep working towards yep. those? And obviously, it's a whole big never ending cycle of social oh, yeah. media and, and all that sort of stuff. Another thing too, that I've had to like teach myself and tell myself is like, you're just not ready. And I think sometimes we overestimate how, <clears throat> excuse me, ready we are because obviously like you want to see yourself in that light one day. It's like, but as much as like, I would love to take my positivity, you know, and talk to auditoriums of schools like I said earlier, 
you got to learn how to talk to five kids before you can go and talk in front of 500. And so like when you see someone who has opportunities like that, it's like, because they've been built up for that moment. You got to get built up. You're not, you're not there yet. We got to still shine you up. We got to still work some kinks out. And so like, that's one thing I tell myself is like, you're not getting these opportunities because you haven't stepped into a season of being ready for it. And everything, everything that's come my way, it's always come like when I was ready. And it's weird how that works out. Like I, I never, as I got older, I never really was in situations where I was like, Ooh, I don't know if I can do this. It's like, no, like this is what I've been waiting on. It's like, yeah, you've been waiting on it because you slowly been getting ready. I remember when, um, you know, it's funny. You asked me earlier, I think like what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. Um, I wanted to be on, I wanted to be a sports reporter. I really loved Stuart Scott growing up. I wanted to be on ESPN one day, love being in front of the camera, loved being in like with the microphone, things like that. So like, that was like my huge thing. I was like, one day I'm going to report for ESPN. You know, I'm going to do that whole thing or I'm going to be a radio DJ. Like I loved all that kind of stuff. And so I was um, doing some DJing stuff for Ohio State Athletics, like just like volleyball games, nothing crazy. Um, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I don't want to like, <laughs> you know, belittle my blessings. Um, but, you know, just doing small stuff. And then like one day they were like, hey, like how would you like to be, you know, the host um, of promotions? I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking it's like I just sit at like a table and I'm like, all right, you know, roosters, blah, blah, blah. Like I just do the announcements. Um, and then I get there and they like hand me a microphone they're like, did you study your script? I'm like, yeah, like, okay, like, you're gonna go live. I'm like, live. I'm like, oh, this is like the real deal. And, you know, I used to go to Cavs games and I see the guy like, from St. Vincent, St. Mary, number 23, Lavra. And I was like, I wanna be that guy. And so, like, you know, but it never would have happened if I wouldn't have, like, gone through, like, my small DJ gigs, DJing for the crew, DJing for, you know, festivals, like, those things helped me build up to being in front of crowds to where I, I could do something like that comfortably and not mm-hmm. be thrown in and be like, uh, uh, and it's like, okay, dude, you're fired. <laughs> like you, like you had an opportunity and you lost it. So, you know, I think the, the biggest thing is just like being real with yourself and being like, am I ready? Do I really think that I could be at that level yet? And if you think so, then cool, keep going. If not, then just keep working. Right. Know, so. I, I feel like it's it's like the classic like video game analogy. It's like, mm-hmm. are, are you trying to do level 10's missions with <laughs> level 2's like equipment? Right, you know what yeah. I mean? Or maybe even vice versa. Like, yeah. do, do you have to notice that like maybe you've outgrown where yeah. you are and you're not even like looking to attract those larger opportunities, mm-hmm. saying Scary. yes to the right things, trying yeah. different things. Did you get too comfortable at level two and you're like, you've equipped everything that says you should be at level 10, but you haven't like tried to navigate yep. to that. And you're just like, oh, I don't know. This is just what I do. But I love that you brought back up kind of like the the entertainment thing mm-hmm. and, and figuring out what you wanted to do because that was honestly where I was gonna, I was gonna jump out of the rabbit hole uh, and back yes, into where we were, um, of like so. You know, the older you get, obviously, like high school, get through school, whatever, whatever that is. What sticks with you? Like, is it is the entertainment thing constantly in the back of your head? Or are you are you actively trying? Like, you know, was was eighth grade your first DJ thing? Like, I don't know. Like, oh yeah, yeah. So uh, with the whole DJing thing, never. If somebody would have sat me down in the cafeteria, you know, on like cheesy dipper day, and was like, hey man, you're gonna DJ for an MLS team, and you know, DJ in the, the championship game, I'm like, oh, no. Or someone's like, you're gonna DJ, you know, at one of the hottest bars in Columbus for your, during your undergrad. I'm like, no way, no way. I never saw it, and it's like. But it was just like you said, it was something that like I found a strength in and I was like, all right, let's run, let's let's go with it. Like, let's see how this goes. I never thought from day one, I was like, yo, I'm going to be like a fire DJ. Like I still to this day, like second guess myself. I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> like people, like, oh, like people will hit me up like, hey, like, you know, my friend re- uh, referred you like they said so many great things about you. I'm like, oh, they did. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. I'm like, the pressure is on. I'm like, right. now I have to do like the best job ever. Um but I remember, like, I used to have this uh, program called Virtual DJ, and I just loved blending songs. I mean, like, that was around, like, Girl Talk, and, like, I don't know. Do you know what Girl Talk is? I don't know. I don't know. It was, like, so. a mix of just, like, a bunch of, uh, like, a compilation of, like, a bunch of different songs, like, of beats over each other. I'm like, yo, like, this song with this beat, I'm like, yo, that's so sick. Like, that to me was, like, the coolest thing, like, hearing just, like, different vibes. So, like, instantly I knew, excuse me, instantly I knew that, like, I just love how you could take one song and with the next and like just, you know, and make a vibe out of it. And so um, I had this program called Virtual DJ and I would like try to do the same thing 
you know, and I, I'd see DJs like, you know, so I tried to do like a little scratch, like my little mouse pad. Um, but I love that. But it was like you said, for your life photography, it was just something fun. Like I wasn't thinking of doing it. So um, I remember I came home one day and like my friend had this little DJ board from like Bed Bath & Beyond. And I was like, where did you get this? He's like, I found a Bed Bath & Beyond. It was like 20 bucks. And it worked with the program. And so like it was like a little board, like a little, it was literally like a toy it looked like. But it worked, you know, we could blend the songs and stuff. So, like, we just start messing around with it. And um, I just remember, like, taking it to parties and, like, hooking it up to, sp like, hooking my computer up to the speakers and, like, just kind of DJing these parties on so my computer. And people are like, yo, man, like, yo, like, you're kind of killing it. Or, like, yo, like, you're doing actually kind of good, you know, because, like, as much as I was doing it for fun, like, I wanted to be good at it. Like, I don't want to just do it. And so then I remember, like, you know, I just start doing that. And then uh, I was at Ohio Dominican. I would practice in my room and things like that and i would take it to house parties on ohio state's campus and i was like let me set my computer up and that's kind of how it started just really just being like hey can i set my computer up i'll play the music for tonight and they're like yeah you know this isn't around the time we had sonos or alexa you know like you literally had to have like a cd or like the uh, the ipod with all the songs on it you know or itunes so right right um so yeah kind of just it kind of just took off from there and then um the chips just fell the right way i had a so actually this is how things really popped off i remember going to big bar one night after i could track me and you know i may have may not been under the influence um and so like you know i just tweeted at big bar i was like oh like big bar should let me dj sometime you know being a little drunk cocky 18 19 year old and um the guy reached back out to me and i was like whoa like this dude like reached out to me and um he's like hey man like we're looking for more djs this and that and I was like, um, honestly, this is like my point of like reflection. I was like, honestly, like, I don't know like what the hell I'm doing. I was like, but I would love to come like shadow. So just went in, start shadowing him. And it's funny, like that guy is like one of my best, best friends now still. Um, and after that, yeah, like I just, he taught me, you know, and then I just kind of practiced on my own and just started lining up my own gigs and practice, practice. And then kind of things just kind of took off. So. so like it came up, like came together really organically. Super it organically. Like, like it Crazy. went from just like, hey, here's the thing I do for fun into like I'm finding my way into yeah. just like DJing nah, at parties. Now and, I can't stop. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> now I can't quit. And now we're talking about it on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> now a question I have is during this time period, mm -hmm. when you're losing the sport aspect of your, I guess, life or identity maybe, right? is DJing like popping up at the same time yeah. and and did you did you feel like there was a transition there of like oh wow like okay i lost this huge chunk of of really what i i thought i really wanted to do or mm. the, at least currently was a big right. part of my life was it DJing that kind of popped up around that time that almost maybe did it for feel sure. a void for you where you were like oh wow this is like making things maybe not feel so awful yeah it did at the perfect time um like I said, my, my coach thought I was quitting because of that, but um, that wasn't the case. You know, I was, like, DJing on the weekends, but I was still, like, working my ass off to, like, wait, can I, sorry, I don't mean to. No, yeah, say, right, cool. say whatever you want, yeah. Um, you, know, I was work, you know, I was working my ass off to, like, make sure that, like, I still was doing good, you know, on the team. You know, I was putting the time in, make sure I was, you know, not missing class, keep my grades up. Like, it wasn't just, like, I fell off, you know. So it was still, like, taking a back burner to track. But when I got hurt, and it's like so it's just so crazy how life works um because i don't think if i ever would have got hurt that i would be where i'm at now and okay. it's you know it's like how like like they say like one door closes another door opens and you know i took that door and i just walked right through it but yeah i mean once i got hurt i was like okay well this is kind of what i have right now and um i started djing in arena district at gasworks and you know, I was DJing at Big Bar too, and I don't, I don't know, man. It's just like, it really just happened organically. I think because I respected it enough to not be cocky and be like, oh, like, I'm doing gigs now. Like, I was like, no, like, I okay, like this opportunity's been presented to me. I want to do it right, dude. I was up till like three a.m. like watching videos, like how to DJ, watching other DJs, watching DJs in club clubs, things like that, looking at different scratches. Like, never was it a thing of like, I know what I'm doing. It was always like, no, how can I make sure I do this right so I can keep doing it? And so, like, um, you know, I was I was doing things like that. And then I was like, I got to get, you know, better equipment. So I think the fact that, like, I respected the craft and, like, the opportunity, like, it respected me back. Like, things just kept happening. Like I said, I was 
DJing game days on Saturdays. And then, like, people would hear me and, like, my song selection. Like, obviously, like, growing up in the Burbs and then being black, like, I know a lot of rap. I know a lot of pop. I know a lot of classic rock from hanging with my white friends and their parents, you know. And then also, like, hanging with my friends who had the Eminem CD when we probably shouldn't have had it, you know. So <laughs> we're, like, 16 listening to Renegade. <laughs> and then, like, it's like, yo, we should not be listening to this. But, you know, I think just the fact that, you know, having that well actually it's funny my uncle actually used to um when i would ride with him he would play djs that would like cut and scratch on the radio and i'm like yo like this is actually kind of cool but it never was like i want to be a dj so everything just kind of worked out um and i think just the good relationships i built too like you know i would never go into a situation being disrespectful to a manager or going crazy on my bar tabs um at least not on purpose um you know just and just treating people with respect bartenders whoever it was so i think it's just really a mixture of so many things. Like it's even hard mm -hmm. to just dwindle it down to like, well, this is why I've been successful. It's like, right. I, I right. Can't, I can't give you like one thing. So now do you think that that like maybe almost unbeknownst to even yourself, you were feeding into that, like the old uh, interest in, in entertainment? Yeah, for sure. I think so. Um, yes and no, because like, I don't know like it's it's a fun job but it's so draining at the same time like it's tough there's definitely been times where I'm like I don't want to do this because you're just it definitely put me in an, an environment to which I was not um knowledgeable to <laughs> working in the industry is it's a lot different life and so that that was like some something I struggled with like first coming into it you know being up to like 3 a.m and then like the drinking and then like just partying and stuff like that. And so, you know, um, that takes its toll on you, but it, I don't know, it just teaches you a lot. And so like, I'm never like regretful for anything that's happened, uh, things like that. But I definitely think, you know, wanting, being somewhat, you know, of an entertainer personally, like now, you know, just in my own life, just even when my friends are over, you know, trying to tell a joke or like trying to like get them riled up or like, you know, get them to smile. Like, I think, you know, just like intrinsically, like that's who I am. Like, I just love to, like my friends will tell you too, like I love to host. Like I'll have like people come over. I'm like, hey, like I just ordered three pizzas. Like you guys hungry? And they're like, bro, why'd you get three pizzas? I'm like, you guys want pizza? And it's like, like you didn't have to do that. Like, so I think it just, yeah, it's just a part of like the kind of like personality thing. So, so random question for you. Do you feel like there are like misconceptions about what a DJ either is or the lifestyle surrounding that career yeah um yes and no i think it's changing there's a lot of djs like that don't even drink at all and i'm like whoa like sometimes i feel like i have to have at least like one or two tequila pineapples or i'm gonna i'm very like as much as like i'm positive dude i am like and i've worked on it i am such an over analytical person yeah yeah and i'll be up there like sweating i'm like man like do people are they having a good time like are people gonna hate me after this but it's like um I think, yeah, no, I've definitely had my misconce misconceptions growing up, you know, as far as, like, finding a partner or just, like, what my parents think I do or just, like, whether my coach thinks I'm quitting track. And it's, like, what remember those one on social media, the four pictures people had, what I do, what people think I do? Yeah, like, yeah. I was, like, this is so true. Right, right. Um, yeah, there's misconceptions. You know, I think uh, for me a big thing, too, was when I was at Ohio State, um, it's those misconceptions were starting to be a little bit true and I noticed it like you know I think people had this image of me like I was like just a straight party boy and like all I did was kick it and drink and it's like you know I'd hang out with people they're like oh I didn't expect you to you know be like this or think like this or talk like this and not to interrupt you no, yeah, but, but really quick like I, I the reason I even asked that is because I feel like it's easy for people just to be like oh you're just here to party yeah. you're the person who turns on the music <laughs> And uses whatever like soundboard you have. Right. Like you're just here to like just do that. When you've already explained the how you engulfed yourself into the culture of it, and, yeah. and we're studying it and and learning it. And yeah. it's the same thing, you know. For me, I feel like in the video world, yeah. people are just like, "Oh, you just love to point a camera at things." And it's like, no, there, there's, there's there's way different yeah. like you know the, angles, the, B roll. Yes, like, and, like and that. again, the purpose and why we are shooting. Yeah. What are we shooting? Lighting, everything, man. Yeah, and like I, I 100%, I'm not a person who loves to just film anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? If somebody like, and we have for sure, like there's, there's, you know, you go through those time frames where you are just shooting anything and everything. Yeah. 
but you know, if somebody came to me and was like, Hey, um, you have a camera, come shoot my couple's photos. I could, could yeah. but I don't, that's not my interest. Yeah. You know, well, what do you mean? You're the creative person with a camera. And it's like, I want to send you to somebody whose interest yeah, is couples photos. For sure. And that's the whole reason I bring that up. So I, I feel like there's probably any career or endeavor yeah. is always have always having its misconceptions. It's just our society. Right, right. Of the, you know, just the classic like, oh, well, you do this one thing, so it must mean that you're just oh, that. Oh, people and there's think no... I'm a jukebox. They're like, do you know this song? I'm like, ah, I haven't heard it. You don't, you're a DJ and you don't know this song? I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm like, dude, I, I, I'm sorry. Like, there's... Uh, literally like, probably 10 billion songs in the world i don't i don't know all of them <laughs> i don't know all of them i'm sorry and it's just like so crazy just like what people think and it's like i know a good amount of songs the thing is like going back to what you said like people don't understand the mental toll like yeah like there's part it's fun don't get me wrong it's a great job wouldn't trade it but the mental toll it takes to play four hours straight for such a wide demographic of people especially in columbus like a girl over there probably wants to hear britney spears and somebody over there probably wants to hear you know little baby and it's like how do i do both without you know and mm -hmm. it's like it's so tough man and so like that's i just wish people could be a, I, I i there's sometimes i'm like where people are like oh i could probably be a dj there's times i'm like please come come right. to a set i'll give you an hour and go ahead i'm not gonna do anything and just see how hard it is. Like, bro, I, there's some, sometimes I go back and I look at my history and I play like 250 songs. Like, imagine having to make a playlist of 250 songs where it's like every song almost has to be a banger. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like... Because you're not just making that playlist for your interests. No. You are trying to cater to the, the people who are there. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're going to probably have to take a week to do it. And it's like, I have to do that in four hours. Right. Every week. And then for me as like a creative, I could play the same set easily if i wanted to it'd be so easy but it's like okay like man i just played that song last week no one knows that i played it last week i do it's like but i don't want to do it again yep and so like that's the toughest part is just like you know just doing the job and then also trying to be creative because there's times where i'm like man like i'm just not feeling creative tonight but i'm like but i know what works and it's like this song works and people are like oh like, you just killed it i'm like dude, i've done that mix like twenty thousand times right right yeah <laughs> but it's all good. So. But I think at some point, you know, when you when you build up your skill set enough, you do get to have that cushion for yourself. Right, exactly. You don't always have like 100%. There are like for a while any video project that myself and my team would make, we were always like this next one better be the next best video project yeah. we've ever done. When it's like, yes, like do a great job. And and make sure you can figure out how to have fun with it and what whatever. But also at the same time, like maybe you on your worst day is still better than a lot of people on their best day at yeah. doing this thing. Exactly. So understand that your default setting, depending on how much you care and all that sort of stuff, a lot of the times your default setting is more than good enough. Yeah. And you don't have to get caught up in being a creative and being like, oh my gosh, this has to be perfect. It has to be, I have to knock it out of the park. I've done the exact, like you explaining yeah. the whole, like I've done the same set, but nobody else knows I've done that with video. Yep. We're like, yes, we're not pr producing the exact same video for right. this client, but oh, we've done this trick before. We've made this thing look kind of like this before, yeah. but we're still doing it in a new and unique way. That's still fresh to everybody else. And we're still doing it in a quality way. Right. Yeah. And we're also still making the, the experience around this a great time. Mm -hmm. So that's still something new and fresh. And again, at your default setting, yeah. you know what you can deliver. There's actually um, something I saw on Instagram today that literally, I think I reposted it. It says, one second. It says, I saw a tweet that said, I feel like I'm constantly worrying about the next part of my life without realizing that I'm right in the middle of what I used to look forward to. And I, as the kids say, I felt that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and actually it's funny because I, th I think I saw you post that. Um, in 100 percent yeah it, it's i i'm for sure guilty of that where yeah, it's tough you know getting caught up in like okay what's next this next thing has to be perfect this next thing has to be better when it's like well remember the it's it's the other kind of classic saying of like remember like where you are right now right. past you really really hoped to be mm -hmm. so it is it's remembering like okay like no i'm things are still good yeah like i'm staying hungry and i still want new things but I need to accept my wins that I currently yeah. have. It's 
Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the best in that moment. Like, it's really just, life's just really just a bunch of set of moments. Like, and we talked about comparison, like, a video you might do, like, it's going to be perfect for that moment. So you can't compare it because th you can't, you know, like, um, people are always like, oh, like, what's your favorite place to DJ? And I'm like, I, I don't really have a favorite because every place has been what I want it in that moment. You know what I mean? So it's like, you just got to appreciate it during that time. And, you know, just always be able to look back and be like, yeah, man, like, that was a good video. Like, I really enjoyed that. And not be like, yeah, that was good. But like, it wasn't, it wasn't my, like, I have, um, we did, I did a video with my friends. We made it, got 11,000 views. And it's like, yeah, like that's, it was fun. And like, we did great. But there's some videos I look at, I'm like, yo, like this one was so fun to make though. I'm like, yo, I was cracking up, like making it myself. So it's like, you really just can't compare those things. Like you got to just enjoy them for what they are, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, in that moment. So I want to dig back in to, to the timeline here. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, you mentioned moving to Arizona yep. is what it was, right? You know, back and forth from Arizona to Ohio. And you also said that like, you know, that was also kind of during a time where maybe stuff was beating you down a little bit where you're yeah. like trying to kind of figure out like what direction, what path am I on? Uh -huh. Can you walk me through maybe even a little bit deeper yeah. into like what that what that time frame was like? Because I also can't imagine what it's like moving back and forth to different cities and states yeah. and colleges and opportunities and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I uh, I went out there for the 2016 Fiesta Bowl. Um, and it was funny. I went by myself. I it was like uh, I told my mom, I'm like, I want to go. And then my friends want to go. She's like, well, go. I was like, okay, I'll go. And so I um, went out there and I, I just found love. I've never been out west. I was always, you know, I've been down south. Um, I've seen like Cali in the movies and stuff like that. But like until you see it, you're like, man, like it, like it's just a different vibe out there. So I instantly fell out with like West Coast vibe and you know the warmth and you know the desert. I'd never seen mountains before in my life. And I was like, man, it was just something new to me. And so I was like, I'm gonna move here after I graduate because I had loved it so much. It was just something so different. Um, just like even the club scene was just so different. And so years go by, three years later, like during those three years, my friends will tell you, I drilled it into everyone's head. Like I'm moving, I'm leaving. As soon as I get my degree, I'm gone. Like I'm eyes are set on Arizona. And so, um, the time came and another friend of mine was like, that sounds like a cool, like cool idea. Can I come with you? I was like, yeah, come on. We can be roommates. And so, um, graduated and literally after that summer, in October, we literally moved on Halloween, packed up the trailer, you hauled it out west, drove all the way out west, um, and yeah, I was like just excited, I was like, man, we'll come out here, I was kind of in that, it was like a bad place for me, and like I feel like God like kind of had to humble me, because I was like, man, like, I want to get out of Columbus, like Columbus is lame, Columbus is whack, like I can do better than here, you know, like, God, like, you know, that typical cocky 25, you know, year old. And, you know, it's kind of a little bit on my high horse. So I was like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to be like this big time DJ. I, I think I was trying to prove everybody else. Like I can do this somewhere else. I can be better than what I am here. And it's like, who cares? <laughs> like nobody cares. You know what I mean? And so I went out there, high expectations, ended up working a sales job at a gym. I would get, I was getting like some good quality gigs, but like I just wasn't like, it wasn't like I like it was here, you know. It was like, man, I'm just struggling. Like no one's giving me a chance. I'm not, you know. I went from DJing almost Thursday through Sunday to DJing like once a month, and it's like, whew, if that's not a character killer, I don't know what is. And so, um, just mentally was going through it, and I was like, in a spot. Where I was like, dude, you gotta like, you gotta do something. And so like, I just start making videos, and that kind of kept me you know motivated like I was you know making different videos weekly and like keeping my creativity but still like nothing was just like moving forward with um you know just getting gigs and dude I was working like I was going to I was going to clubs like every weekend and not even like the party because I'm like I gotta be out like I gotta I gotta meet DJs like I'm going up to DJs I'm shaking hands I'm introducing myself like I'm doing all the right things and it's just like man like nothing is working and um I think just instead of like putting the work in, like I just felt so entitled. I was like, I know what I'm doing. I know I can DJ. Like I just need the chance. But it's like, like I said, if you can't do a small gig, can't get the big gig. So like I wasn't even trying to do, like build a base. 
So, you know, just things kind of like went south, quit the job at the gym, you know, because I hated it. And I was like, well, I'll just do something else. I'll try to get more gigs. Didn't happen. So I told my roommate, I was like, look, I got to go home. You know, I got to go back to where I know I can get work. Um, but in a, in a sense, like it was like a beautiful like homecoming. I, I came back with a different mindset. Like I said, I had been humbled and, you know, I, I didn't come back as like the like, cocky person. I kind of came back as more like, OK, like I need to perfect my craft a little more. I need to keep working hard. Um, I need to build a brand and I need to help inspire other people. Like that's where like. You know, I came back more in the positivity side. Like, I want to start, like, this, you know, mental health group. And I just kind of came back a different person. And, um, you know, obviously I'm not perfect. Still working on some things. But, yeah, man, just coming back, I was nervous. I don't want to be embarrassed. Like, you know, oh, why would you move back? Dang, what happened? And it's like, oh, it wasn't good enough. <laughs> it's like, but that's not the case. You know, just just things didn't work out. Right, you know? right. So, um, but, yeah, but the funny thing is, like, now, like, I fly out to Arizona monthly to do some gigs and now i'm starting to get booked out there and i'm having other friends hit me up from different states and it's like it's all about planting the seeds you know little did i know i was planting seeds and i got to come back and i've just been a part of so many great things and now i get to travel and enjoy it so everything always works out how it should you know but you don't see it as you're going through it right so. right and it's probably also important that you got an experience outside of maybe the bubble that you were in huge yeah you know it, it gave you a different perspective you got For to sure. look at it from a, a, a just a different perspective mm -hmm. of like oh this is where i thought i was or what i thought i was doing oh yeah I was not ready like i said <laughs> right, dude right. i'm telling you i went out there and like i heard some of their djs and i was like yeah that's why you're not getting gigs because you're not not that i wasn't a good dj like but it's like that's that's what they wanted and like that wasn't me like, that wasn't how I did things, mm -hmm. you know? So, I don't know. I think it's just, like, looking back, man, like, everything worked out how it was supposed to. And, like, yeah. things keep working out how they're supposed to. And, like, that's why I try not to get so caught up on, like, what's not happening. It's, like, let's focus on, like, what is happening. Like, what can we control? And just enjoying it. You know, like, I fly, like I'll fly out there and, like, I DJ like this. It's, like, a pretty nice restaurant. It's not, like, a super – I mean, obviously, like, it's pandemic. People have to be sitting down. But it's not, like, a rager. But it's, like, I'm just grateful that, like, I get the chance to do what I wanted to do when I first came out here. So it's like now it's just like, finally, like finally someone's booking me out here. It's like, no, it's like, man, like, wow. Like how beautiful is this? Like yeah. three years ago I was crying cause I couldn't get a gig. Now I get to fly out here for three days and like enjoy the sun and get a gig, get paid for it and like go back home. It's like, cool. Well, it's just that, you know, it's like the, the path to that goal mm -hmm. just looked a little bit different than what we originally think it normally will look exactly you know what i mean you you look at this thing and you're like okay if i do step a b and c i bet it'll get me to this yeah. goal when realistically it's like well you got to actually go through steps a through yeah. you know one a one b yeah one C, and <laughs> then you know you can you can reach that so yeah there's right. there's sometimes those detours i want to talk about the mental health health group for, for a little sure. bit favorite so thing, so thing talk about Walk me through that. You know, you, you come back and you've kind of got this new outlook and now you're, you know, how do you go about even this idea and starting it up and its purpose yeah. and everything else? Um, yeah, I just got to a point where, you know, I was just like, it came from, I knew when I moved back, I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, hey, when I move back, we have to do this. Like, we have to like find a way to get people together. And like, because like we had talked, he, he, him and I, uh, it's my friend Zero, like we both like to you know, help people. Like we both like to, you know, put positivity. I was like, dude, like we need to like find a way to get people together in person and like just talk about this stuff. I'm like, cause like that's what we do, you know, at home or, you know, after the bar or whatever. Like, we, we talk, but like not in a setting to where like people can come and really discuss it. And so like, you know, I was like in my kitchen one day, I was like just kind of flustered and so much is going on. And like, you know, I'm just, kind of depressed i'm trying to make food the food's cooking too fast and i'm just uh, so i was like i literally like, that's what i did I was like uh, i'm like dude like just just breathe for a second and like it just like clicked i was like that's it like like just breathe like that's like that's what i want to call it because i feel like in that moment i like took a second to realize like i'm so just you know flustered and like hyped up i'm not even breathing correctly like i was like uh, like i was like oh my gosh like why did I just need to take that deep breath? And so um, I hit him up. I was like, yo, this is going to be the name of it. And, like, we're going to, like, see where it goes. So I moved back. The first meeting was actually at um, Woodlands. I had a friend who was a manager, and I had no space to do it. I was like, well, we got to start somewhere. 
I wasn't going to come home, make an excuse like, well, I can't find a space. I was like, wherever we can get a space, like we're going to take it. Even if it's in a bar, whatever, like we'll figure it out. I didn't want it to be like in a bar. I don't want people to like be drinking, but it's like, you know, we kind of just went off to a side room. And so it was cool. I was so nervous to start it. But like after, I think like maybe like eight friends came out, like my closest friends. And like, I felt like the proud friend giving like the presentation. Um, but you know, like they could tell like I was passionate about it. And like, they're like, Hey, like this was good, man. Like, you know, let's keep it going. And then, um, I, I reached out to my friend. I said, Hey man, thanks for the, for the spot, but we're probably going to try to shift it somewhere. It's not a bar. And then my, um, my one friend, she had, uh, an apartment complex with a beautiful like clubhouse couches and everything TV. I could hook up the computer. And so I like made the Instagram page and I just start telling people about it, inviting people out. And people were kind of skeptical at first. Like they didn't know what it was. Like, well, what is it? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, we're kind of still building it. Um, all I knew was like I just wanted it to be a place where people could come and talk about things that we're all going through, kind of like in our mid twenties. But now it's um, to fast forward like now like hi, I have like high school kids that I talk to, and my mom wants to start something. But so we just kept building it, and like I was buying pizza every week, and you know I want, but I wanted it to be something like where people, like I said, they could get value. So I'm like providing food. My friend's mom was a caterer. I was paying her like I was like, hey, can you make like some food for the group and like. People are coming like, man, this food's great. And so like, I was like, all right, cool. Like people are coming, like they're getting fed. Um, and I think just like everything just happened organically. The meetings weren't lectures. They were like real discussions. People could talk, come from different backgrounds, not feel, you know, subjected to being, you know, um, criticized or looked at a, a, a weird way. And then like one week, it's like eight people. One week, it's like 10 and 15. And then we're getting 20 people. Then we're getting 25. So it's like steadily growing. Um, yeah, man. And then just like people just kept hearing about it. They're like, hey, I want to come to your thing. Hey, I want to come to your thing. And like we just, like I said, staying consistent on, um, you know, social media. Like I said, like I made the page and, you know, I started making my own flyers for it. Just I was like, man, if I'm going to do this, I got to learn how to do everything. And then um, now like I'm comfortable enough where I make like videos and like I'm in front of the camera. Uh, which at first, like, I was not, like, I was like, uh, it's easy to do a story, but to, like, make a whole video, I was not, not feeling at first, but, um, yeah, man, it's just been, uh, it's like, I think this is year three, going into year three, so it's like, you know, now, like I said, we're talking to high school kids, and obviously virtual meetings, but, um, you know, before the pandemic, it was, it was just awesome, man, people were really coming, I remember one session vividly, we were talking, we had, we were having a discussion. It was a good discussion. And like, there's this one kid sat next to me and he had like not talked the whole time. And then like, he asked a question and then like the whole shift of the focus went to this kid. I closed my computer and like, we literally just like let this dude vent and like all the stuff he was going through. And it was just like the craziest thing because I asked him, I'm like, who, like, who told you to come? He's like, Oh, my friend sent it to me on Instagram. I was like, oh, are they here? He's like, no, like they don't even live in Columbus. I was like, so you don't know anyone here? He's like, no. And I'm like, and you came? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what? The That's heck? awesome. It's just like, it was very surreal because I was like, man, yeah. like, it, like that, in that moment, I was like, dude, there's a lot that can really happen with this thing. And I'm like, you need to do this correctly and like make sure like you don't let it go to the wayside. And so like, that's why I've been so adamant about it is just because like moments like that and like when people like will bring their journals. And I don't want to like say too much, but it's like, you know, when people can come and just be like, hey, like I have something I want to share that's been in my heart. And it's like, okay, close the computer. What's up? You know, it's like just creating that space for people. So, mm -hmm. yeah. man, so where, I mean, obviously plans can change, ideas can change, but like where, where do you want to see that go? Man, so that's something I've actually thought about a lot. Like I want it to, I want to implement it into schools to where it's like, it's an organization, just like student council, just like. I don't, I don't even know what kids do, like, you know, just like science club or math club. Like, I want it to be – because I know, like, it's funny. Like, when I was in school, uh, we had this thing called Link Leaders, and I was actually, um, like, the vice president of it. And so this was, like, for incoming freshmen, the upperclassmen would kind of, like, have a group, and we would kind of just, like, be, like, their mentors. And so, like, I want something like that to go back into schools because I don't feel like there's anything like it. Like, with they, I'm like, what are these counselors doing? I'm like – you got kids struggling at home. Well, this, the the school I work with is inner city, and, and, and that's not to say there's not problems anywhere, but it's like 
yo, you got an 18 year old with two kids that doesn't even have her diploma. And it's like, but nobody in the school thought to maybe pull her aside to see if she's okay, to see like what she's going through. It's like, yeah, I get it. Maybe she doesn't want to take a test today, but it's like probably because she doesn't know how, she, how she's going to pay her rent or take care of her kids. And it's like, I think sometimes we forget, you know, what it's like to be a kid or what it's like, you know, some people like they get through their problems and they forget what it was like to be in their problems. And so, you know, my whole goal is to just create those spaces all around the United States within schools. And then like even in corporate world, you know, in organizations, creating those in workplaces because, hey, yeah, so-and-so, maybe they didn't meet their quota or they had a terrible sales call because, hey, maybe them and him and his wife aren't having a, you know, good marriage right now. Maybe their kid is just got diagnosed with, you know, something that they never saw. Com- like, you just don't know. Like, yeah, you know, so yeah. I just, I just want to implement like that space so that, you know, instead of assuming stuff, we can be like, Hey, like, is everything okay? Mm-hmm. And then we can go from there. Like if you're just being a lazy worker, okay. Like that's something we can yell at you at. But it's like, yo man, like if you need to like stay after work and come to this meeting and maybe talk about some stuff going on at home and hear from other people that have experienced it, please do. And that only, not only does that create better schools, it creates better businesses. It creates a better society, but we don't have these spaces to where people can go. And like we, I mean, I know people have therapists and things, but it's like, this is free. You know what I'm saying? Like you can come for free. Like a lot of people might not feel comfortable just going by themselves to a therapist, but in a group setting, it's a little bit easier to maybe either sit back and listen and be like, wow, like there's 20 people going through the same thing I'm going through or to speak up and be like, Hey, like I'm going through this. Like I kind of would like to get other people's opinions mm-hmm. and you know, that's just kind of like the environment like we've created. So I, I cannot express one, how much I love that, but Thank two, you. how important I feel like things like that, mm-hmm. like are and, and how wild it is that a lot of that stuff doesn't really exist. It's nuts. Like it's crazy. It, do, do you feel like there's, there's room for that change to be made or do you see a, a kind of a shift going in that since like there's a lot more talk you know, in, in recent years of people are starting to finally identify mental health and yeah. stuff like that for what it is. Do you feel like workplaces and schools are going to like cater to that a little bit oh. more? Do you think it's going to not change or take forever or? I think it can, but no one's, I don't want to say no one's doing it because I can't prove that, but it's just like, it's, I don't see it. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that I, I do have high schools saying like, hey, can you come to my school? That just goes to tell me like there's nothing implemented there. And it's like, how? It's like, what's going on? How has no one thought to do something for it? It's like, yeah, like, it's cool to be in a sport. It's cool to be in a club and keep them busy. But it's like, and I, and I guess mental health is something new-ish in our society that people are finally saying, like, it's a cool thing to talk about. You know, yeah, while it's cool, it's still real. Mm-hmm. Like, while it's cool to talk about mental health, it's like, this isn't like a, you know, for show thing. People are struggling. Like, and I know, because like, I, I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't go through it, you know? So it's like, I get it. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, just imagine like being at a job and just being stressed and someone that is like, you know, in charge of that organization or, or like the president comes as like, Hey, Johnny's kind of been slacking lately. Can you, can you go talk to him and see if he's doing okay? Hey, Johnny, what's up, man? I'm, I'm with just breathe, man. We noticed that you've, you know, being, you kind, you seem kind of stressed lately. You know, your work's been kind of, I want to invite you out tonight, man. We're going to be talking about stress in the workplace. If he doesn't want to come, that's fine. Like, you know, like at least have something there. And maybe he does come and he's like, man, look, I just, dude, I've been trying to meet my quote. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, James is like, dude, that's how I was when I started. Now we're building connections. Now we're building relationships. Now we're letting people get things off their chest. But if there's no room for it, then you know, now we have people taking their stress from work to their stress at home. Their stress at home becomes their stress at work. It becomes a vicious cycle. Same thing with schools. A kid that has to wake up and, you know, maybe take care of their little brother or little sister or doesn't have food to eat or has could even take a hot shower. No wonder they're in a bad mood. They're probably wearing the same socks from like two days ago and you want them to take an OGT test in which they're already not set up to, you know, succeed in anyways. It's like, you know, so... I, you can tell like that kind of stuff. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, why are we doing this to people? So like, I definitely like want to do as much as I can to, 
you know, just implement a shift in cultures within workplaces and school places because half the time it is just a mental thing that's that's hurting us. And it's not so much that we can't do the job or we don't want to be in school, but it's like, like I said, it's hard to be in school when you got 50,000 things going on in your head too. So, mm-hmm. well, and, and so much of it comes from, I feel like that classic one track mind of society Yeah, of just, just do good in school, just get the good grades, yeah. just like w- nothing else should exist other than this one thing that we are talking about right now. Just do good at your job. Mm-hmm. Just accomplish the thing that we need you to do at work. Just yeah. you know, stop thinking about anything else. Why would you wonder about anything else? And it's like, well, like, I'm, I'm wondering about my life. I'm yeah. thinking about my life in the same way that um, your you know, uh, track coach or whatever, you know, is like, why would you even think about DJing when you yeah. should be running and you should be doing this exactly. and whatever? It's like getting getting everything to shift from that one track mind mm-hmm. of just like, nope, tunnel vision. We are just thinking about what's in the right now. We're not going to work proactively. We're just going to work reactively to everything. We're just going to – what what needs done right now? I don't want to yeah. know why this person isn't working well. I just want them to work better. Yeah. When it's like you're not – are you trying to really find solutions to anything? You know, and, and, and that does. I mean it, it goes down to things like mm-hmm. that happening of like just talk to someone. Yeah. J- you know, just talk to that person or those people that – you see is is not accomplishing the thing that you're wanting to accomplish or whatever it may be and get to the root of why that is especially now like i just hope companies are like checking on their employees because it's like dude people like i don't don't even say just people like even me like this has been a tough time like Mm -hmm. to shift from it wasn't even like a gradual it's like okay everyone has to work from home now okay kids have to work also be at school while you work at home and now you have moms trying to do Zoom, like trying to do Zoom calls, and their third graders in there, you know, picking his nose on their Zoom call too, like probably acting up. Like, like my mom will call me. She's like, "Oh, like your brother, like he just hasn't been doing his homework. You know, he's not waking up on time." And it's like, yeah, because he's so used to getting on a bus and going to a classroom, and like now he has to be. Now he's almost working his nine to five. Like, mm-hmm. imagine how that feels for a kid. Like, I can't see my friends. I can't play. I got to just sit here all day in this computer. And then after that, I got to do homework and go to bed and then do the same thing tomorrow. It's like you're already putting them in that corporate mindset as kids. And, like, that's kind of scary. And so, like, I don't know, man. It's just I hope, you know, like I said, I hope, you know, people are checking on their people and just, you know, not even the workplace, just friends checking on friends. I know for me, like, it's definitely been a wake-up call. Like, just uh, I'm like, man, like, I got all this free time, like. I wasn't calling my, my, my family enough or I wasn't calling my friends enough. So, you know, hopefully as we hopefully shift out of it, people are going to take some of those qualities that they learned, you know, and apply them to when we do kind of get back on this hamster wheel of life and not let things just get back to the old normal, but we can take new normals and, you know, kind of combine them. So mm-hmm. and I think it's allowing people to go through these structures or the, mm-hmm. the normality or whatever in their way. Finding out, like, how does this work for you? Right. Like, still cool, yeah, we're going to, we're, everything's for sure going to jump back into the, the hamster wheel. Like, it's going to happen. But I do hope that there is a shift gradually or something that allows people to, like, well, how, how do you navigate through this? Yeah. You don't have to navigate the same thing we were talking about earlier of, you know, when we post positive stuff on the internet, mm-hmm. we're not telling somebody this is the step-by-step thing that you have to do because right. I'm saying so. No, it's just sharing here's my experience and maybe you'll feel something from this that you can figure out how your experience can fix the things that you're wanting to fix or change or whatever it is. And that's why I say like, you'll be able to tell the real from the real because like, dude, I could easily get on Instagram and quote Tony Robbins all day. Mm -hmm. I can quote Les Brown, Jim Rohn, Ed, like I've, I study these guys. Like this isn't like for me, it's not just like a, oh, I'm a positive person and, like, I'm just, you know, going to just tell you guys. No, like, this is something, like, I I also study because, like, it means so much to me. I'll go home and watch, like, psychology videos because, like, I want to know more. Like, I want to know not just, like, from an experience side but from a scientific side. Like, okay, like, well, what causes anxiety? Like, what causes depression? How can we fix it? Oh, you're telling me the foods that I eat also can help me too? Cool. Well, let's add that to just breathe. Oh, you're telling me if I get this much sleep or if I meditate or, like, you know, taking it serious enough to 
to where it's like, okay, like this guy has a bit of a background. Because obviously I didn't go to school for it. Excuse me. I didn't go to school for it. So it's like you got to take it serious. And it's like you'll always be able to tell the real from the real because in situations, I like, I know like in situations, like my friends will hit me up and like, dude, like I need to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, let's talk. I feel confident enough to give you solid advice compared to someone who's just like, well, here's a quote. Well, here's this. Yep. It's like, no, I can talk to you from experience and like help guide you through it. And I can also give you some tools that might help you that help me. So it's like, um, yeah, man, you'll, you'll always be able to tell like who's, who's really in it and, and who's just trying to, yeah. And it's, I mean, it goes back to like the intention and purpose thing. Yeah. It's like, are you sharing a quote just to share a quote and it's very inauthentic and it's just that, or is yeah. there a real purpose behind it, behind what you're sharing or behind what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So last couple questions for you. Okay. So looking back at your journey mm-hmm. so far. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> it's not over yet. Hopefully. So far, so far. What do you feel like? What, was there ever a time? Um, and if the answer is no, not at all, then awesome. But was there ever a time up till now where you ever like questioned any of the like the oh, DJ stuff or dang. you were like, not just like, oh man, this is too hard to do. But was it, was there ever a moment where you were like, maybe this should just not be like, I, I think I might just stop. Tons. Tons of times. There's been times where I'm like mid set where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it's like, but it wasn't the DJing. It was me because you got to think, man, like the craft, like you do the craft. The craft isn't like telling you like what, like you get to do it how you want to do it. And so I think as a creative, you have to decipher between like, okay, like, is this something like I've done it? I feel some type of fulfillment from it where I can step away and like, you know, the late great Kobe, like when he walked away from basketball, he's like, I I'm good. I, I'm done. Like I did what I wanted to do. I gave it all. It's like, are you there? Or is it something personally with inside you that you can't even, you can't even pull that creativity out of you because you're, you're struggling mentally. And so like now, like I even had someone tell me a friend, they're like, man, like you, you just, like your sets have been kind of different lately. I'm like, dude, I just, I'm just thinking less and just, I'm just going with it compared to like when I'm thinking about like everything in my mind, DJing, I'm like, oh my God, like are people having fun? Am I a good DJ? Am I even supposed to be here? Should I be here? Like, are people going to talk about me on Twitter? Like, oh, leak, he sucks. You know, like these things are running through my mind, like mid set. And like, that's when I would, I'd go home and I'm like, oh my God, I played a terrible set. And people are like, oh, I had so much fun last night. I'm like, no, that was a terrible set. But it's like I'm in my own head, you know, instead of just like enjoying it. So I think for me, like the times where I wanted to quit came from when I wasn't in a good space. Because when I'm in a good space and I'm DJing, I'm having a ball. I'm having a blast. Like it's just so fun. And like you can just tell. But the the days where I'm like mentally tired or struggling, like I'm like, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think it just it just really depends on how you feel as a person and how much fulfillment you have truly gotten out of like whatever you're doing creative creatively or just professionally so so what what was the feeling like when and you don't have to name like the specific Mm -hmm. thing you know we don't have to like name drop if you don't want to but what was the feeling when you got that like first what you would deem like first like big gig like what was that feeling like was it that fulfillment you know sort of yeah i mean it's crazy because like it like they just keep getting better but i would say let me think back. Let me think back. I know like when I first started working with the crew, that was huge. When I was at Big Bar, that was huge because like, dude, I was like 19 DJing at like bars that Ohio State players came into. So it was like, it was nuts. That was like the crazy, that was probably the craziest time of my life. Because like, it was like, like I said, being that young and just being... Ohio State's an animal. Like you, I came from like Medina. Like you know, we'd go out in Cleveland, but like just being in a club and like it's like, dang, that dude just ran for three hundred yards, and like now he's like right here. Like you know, it's a future. Like you know, so like when you're at that age, like all that stuff is just like mind blowing to you. But so like for me, that was cool. You know, being able like to be in the atmosphere, and then um. Man, I don't even know. Like, I've just been like so blessed to do like so many different things. I know like working like a Breakaway Festival was cool. Like, being able like I hosted, I, I was like the host for like the the 
prime stage one year um i would say the best gig i don't know man like this past year like being able to dj for the cup it was nuts like being in the stadium where it's limited during the pandemic first title or title first title since i think 2008 maybe and like just everything that went on with this like gear and it's like man to be in this like position with all this going on like it's been like the biggest blessing to like be able to be like man like tell my kids one day like yeah like the mls cup that was in the pandemic your dad dj that like that's so cool like just you know yeah. so i think like up to this date, that, the Ohio State gig is obviously cool. And uh, funny enough, just anytime I get to do a wedding, like, that means a lot to me. Um, just because, you know, that's someone's, as I always say, that's their biggest day. And I'm kind of, like, have a huge role in that. So I really love my weddings. I love my bride and grooms. And I always, always, always try to make sure, like, I do my best in those. Because, like I said, that's that's someone's, you know... They're a huge moment, and I don't want to mess that up. So right, but yeah, man, I don't know. There's just uh, every every gig has been something different, something cool. Whether something magical happened, or I, I played a great set, or I found a new mix, or just you know uh, the scenario was significant. But yeah, I mean those those are kind of like a couple that have been pretty pretty huge. So I love it. So so if somebody's listening right now mm -hmm. and they're hearing us, you know, they've heard your whole story and the right. journey. They're hearing us talk about all this positive mindset stuff, yeah. just doing it, just trying it, all that. Maybe that person listening is wanting to figure out what their path is. Maybe they're they're wanting to figure out like, I've got this thing in mind. I want to start this brand or I want to I want to try and DJ or I want to try and do videography or I want to try and create my own product or whatever it is. They're, they're wanting to try that thing, but they're just unsure on how to take right. that first step. If you were sitting down with that person and they're like, I just don't know if I'm in the right headspace. I don't even know how to get started. What would you share with them? Man, uh, just get started. Like I said, go with the biggest lesson I've learned is go with what you have. Because if you keep waiting, you'll always be waiting. Oh, I need better equipment. Oh, I need better. Have, oh, I, like just go with what you have and then just grow from there. Like you're going to grow. Like, and that's the best way to do it. Because like if you try to wait till everything's perfect, you're going to have all this stuff around you that you think made you ready. And then you're not going to be ready because you didn't put the work in. Like my mantra this year has been the rewards come from the work. And like, I think when you get to a sense of entitlement, you think like, Oh, like I should, like you said earlier, I should be getting this or why do they have that? It's like, but you're not working for it. So I would say just, just start walking on the path. Like just, you know, whether you have a full duffel bag or you just have one shirt on your back, like just start walking down the path and start going on the journey um be a sponge that's the biggest thing don't ever think you're too good to learn like there's djs younger than me coming up and i'm like okay like this kid's this kid's kind of good like you know let me oh dang i didn't hey bro what song is that oh that's hot right now cool you know what i'm saying older djs like man like what scratch is that? like taking something from everyone like never thinking that like someone's too good for for you to to learn from um and then also putting yourself in a position to be a student. Watch YouTube videos. We It's 2021. There's nothing you can't learn on the internet right now. So if you're serious about it, go listen. Go you know, go to um, seminars if you want to do something in the corporate world. Or you know, just find people that have done it successfully and just start either asking them or just watching them. Um, and then I would just say, like, make sure it's something that you want to do passionately and it's not just financially because if it's financially you're gonna you're gonna start hating your life like i didn't get into djing because i thought it would be good money i got into it because like i love to make people dance and have fun and the money just came you know it just came with it and like i dude i still do some gigs for free like if a friend has like an event and i and told my friends this does not mean i'll do all your events for free but you know a friend had an event and i was like hey like, can i pull up and dj your event she's like yeah like i don't really have i was like ah, it's not about money i was like just let me come and spice it up for you Cause like, that's still my passion. So like, make sure like you're in it because like, you know, you hear all the time, your why, you know, make sure it's something that you love, but yeah, man, just go be a student and, uh, yeah, just have fun with it, you know? And if you, if it doesn't work out, cool. You try it. If it does beautiful, like you found something new, like to be good at. So, but yeah, I'd say that's like my, 
my good solid you know starting point yeah so. yeah dude this has been great man thank you i, I, I seriously appreciate it. you sharing that and sharing everything that you've shared like this is this has been fun this was, was this fun for you yes you're, you're like dude it. hey you know what i didn't feel like i wasted all this no, time we could, we could go for three more hours <laughs> we really could <laughs> i yes 100 percent agree um okay so last question for you mm-hmm. so i end every one of these episodes the same way okay. same question okay you can go deep on this. You can give a general <laughs> thing. Whatever you want to do, it's totally in your hands. So right now, I want you to pretend like that mic is attached to everyone in the world. Okay. Doesn't matter where they are, who they are, whatever. Mm-hmm. They can hear what you're saying right now. So with a live mic attached to everyone, what is it you're going to say to them? What do you want to share with everybody? Wow. That's like one of the best questions I think I've heard in a while. (laughs) I would say that we need to really start focusing on just loving, being a focal point of love and also like being receptive of it. I think like we just, with everything going on, I would tell everyone to just like learn how to love more and stop being so tied up in Fox cnn stop being so tied up in twitter and facebook but like be a better person so that we can have a better world i think that's the biggest thing like i tell myself all that all the time if i can be an example maybe that'll make somebody else be an example so yeah to the world it would be be a better person so we can have a better world and just be the example you know whether it's holding a door or paying for someone's food or giving some money to someone homeless like be the example because like that's what we need more than anything everyone's kind of just tearing each other down and it's just like but no one's being an example so yeah that that probably be what i'd say so dude leek i appreciate this conversation so much man dude thank you thank you so freaking much for doing this uh before we officially wrap up plugs and promotions do you want do you want anyone where can they find what you do everything you're involved in toss out all the tags and all that sort of stuff where can people find you yeah so my uh mental health group is underscore just breathe one uh if you don't want to follow me that's fine at least follow that um underscore just breathe one um all the updates are on there all the positivity the quotes the videos um the zoom meetings everything's on there and then my um Instagram is underscore leak official, L E E K official. All the goofy videos, the newly arrived giveaways I've been doing, uh, which has actually been kind of, it's really been fun. Um, but yeah, I, I usually just tell people to follow me on Instagram. Twitter, I just kind of, you know, Twitter is just where I do, everyone just gets their thoughts off. Um, yeah, and if you want to hear some music, I uh, have Spotify and um, iTunes weekly playlist that I've been doing that'll have other people curate. So they're called leaked playlists. And so um, I just had people send in their own personal playlist that they're proud of and we just promote it. So if anybody has music that they want to share, um, things like that, let me know. They've been going pretty well and it also helps me listen to more music so I don't have to do all the work. <laughs> Think smarter, not harder um, as well. So, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, like I said, man, I, I love the conversation. I love being able to share and I, I appreciate you having me on. So. Dude, thank you so much for sitting down with me for almost two hours. Oh, wow. Almost at that two hour mark, dude. Seriously, thank you so freaking much. Appreciate it. Fun conversation. I, I am super happy I got to meet Leek and really get to know him here. As I said in the episode, I had seen and heard his name around a lot, and uh, I'm stoked I got to get him on the show and and sit down for a long and and fun conversation. So if you're looking for some positivity in your feed, some fun, some some new creativity, or just want to watch some, you know, watch a a cool person's adventures, I implore you to go follow Leek online. You can find him at underscore Leek official um, for real. You know, if if you you know want a little more of your social feed to be filled with some, you know, motivational or inspirational shares rather than just I don't know memes or whatever, definitely check him out. And, and of course, keep up with everything else he's up to uh, outside of just sharing that content, all the the contests, the the DJing, the music, all that sort of stuff. Um, so much of what we covered in this episode, you can keep up with it there at underscore leak official. So. 
we'll wrap it up there. We'll keep this one short. 32 episodes down. Many, many more to come. One more reminder, once more, if you want to keep up with all the new episodes that I drop, ranging from these full-length episodes to the 15-minute Friday advice-filled episodes, make sure to subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. Follow it on Spotify. Follow me on social media at WYDHpod and at Who's Ross Tyson. So if you do, I'll see you there. Otherwise, I'll talk to you on the next episode when I'm back sitting down with a brand new guest you may or may not know of with a story that you for sure never heard. <laughs>